Hi, my name is Lou and I'm here just to chat with you a bit about leading worship online. If you're anything like me, you've been thrown into the deep end over the last few months and learning how to lead without people in front of you has been a bit of a challenge. You know, a few months ago we had people in front of us. I just launched a series of conferences and I could see people, I could feel people, I could hear people. And now all I see is myself, I see a screen and it can be very challenging. So what I've done is I've actually transferred some of the things that I was doing in a live situation and transferred them into this online setting. Once a week on a Wednesday morning, I lead worship live with my husband, Nathan, and also we do a coffee morning where we're leading worship. And then we're also filming different bits of worship for different people. So I've picked up a few tips that I would really love to share with you. First tip is this, smile. Now, often when we are serious, you know, when we're concentrating, when we're thinking about the chords, when we can only see ourselves, we can get a little bit serious because we're not really connecting with anybody. But actually, a smile goes a long way. A smile makes people feel welcome. It makes people feel like you want to be there. You're excited to be leading them. It makes them feel engaged and invited and welcomed in. So smile. It's not fake, it's important. Next thing is about body posture. So um, it, again, we can feel a little frozen um, because we, we're not engaging with people. We haven't got a band around us necessarily to be um, working alongside. But the principle about moving our bodies and expressing ourselves in worships is still there. So it might be that if you're sat like I am uh, on a stool and you're, and you're leading and if you're not playing an instrument, uh, you can use your hands. So if I was just using my legs, you can't really see anything that's going on. And if I bop a bit, if I move around a bit, I'm, it, it's good. But I can also look a bit like I'm on a train. So I've found that using my hands and my arms to express, to overflow my worship can be really helpful for me, but also for those watching. They can feel the movement. They feel like they're part of what is going on in the room. The other thing you can do when you're standing up is to move your body. Now, if the Bible calls us to dance before the Lord. The Bible calls us to lift our hands before the Lord. It causes us to use our um, bodies to express our worship. And we still need to do that even if no one else is in the room. On Sunday, I was leading worship at my church and a friend of mine messaged me and she said she'd turned on the telly, she was feeling a bit flat, feeling a bit low, wasn't really feeling very engaged and, and very excited about being there. And then she saw me dancing around and enjoying God. And basically I was just doing it because I love to move my body before God. But what it did was it released joy in my friend and she suddenly remembered, oh yeah, this is where I'm meant to be. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be thankful today for God's love for me. So never underestimate the power of using your bodies when you are worshipping online as well. The next thing to think about is your camera position. Um, often we, uh, I've noticed that it's easy because we're a lot of us are leading on phones and um, we haven't got a main camera on a tripod. What can happen is the, the camera position can be a little bit awkward. So it can either be a bit, bit too low or a bit too high. Um, but what we wanna do is think about where the camera is. So I would encourage you, if you're leading regularly, find a way of getting your phone to uh, eye position, to eye level, because then it makes the, uh, the communication with the person that you're communicating with, the congregation you're communicating with, much easier. It also helps us to make eye contact. You know, if, they, if we were in the room with people, we wouldn't be looking away, looking above, looking down. We'd be looking people straight in the eye. And so as worship leaders, as, as we're leading people, we need to be doing the same thing. Now this is slightly weird because all we can see often is ourselves and uh, we can't see people, but you've got to imagine that you are basically having a conversation with those people. You're leading them in their room. So use your eyes to communicate, use your eyes to connect, which leads me really nicely onto keep your eyes open. So often in worship, we can close our eyes because we are you know, engaging with God. Sometimes we do that because we're a bit nervous. Sometimes we do it because we don't wanna draw attention to ourselves. But actually, when we're leading, what that can do is bring a disconnection between you and the, the congregation. So I wanna encourage you to open your eyes as you lead people. It doesn't mean that you can never close them. Of course, there are moments where you've, you feel a response and you wanna just focus on God, of course. 
but also your job as a leader in that moment is to draw people and lift their attention to God. And if they think that they've suddenly been disconnected with you, you've stopped communicating with them because you've closed your eyes, then you've got a long way to bring them back. So keep your eyes open. The next thing is about mic position. You know, often um, I've seen that people are using um, those um, pop shields and what they do is they cover over their mouths. Now we've discovered in this day and age that actually wearing masks really does cut off our way of communicating. We don't know what people are thinking. We don't know whether they're smiling or not smiling. And we can do the same thing with our microphones. For example, if I do this and I'm and you know, I cover my mouth, you can't really tell whether I'm happy or I'm sad, if I'm joyful or if I'm not. We've cut off an element. There's a barrier in our communication. If, however, I keep my mic slightly lower and potentially tilted up a little bit, what happens is the, the sound is still traveling into the mic and we are still connecting. You can see when I'm smiling and when I'm not smiling, you can see what's going on. You know, we've discovered in this season when we're having to wear masks that actually we really miss seeing people's whole faces to understand what is going on. So that's the same with your mic position. Let people see your faces. The next thing to encourage you in is about your song key. We're used to being in a congregational setting where there's lots of people singing together. So there's a bit more confidence in the room. People are confident to sing out. They're confident to sing loudly. So when the keys are quite high, that's okay because we're all there to support one another. Now, currently, online, people are sat at home either by themselves or with, a, with another person or a family but their confidence to sing out is slightly less. So what we wanna do is we wanna equip them with a, with a way of being able to sing. And a, a great way of doing that is actually by making sure that the key of the song is great for that moment. You know, you wanna think about people, should we bring the key down a, a notch or two so that people can sing comfortably without feeling like they have to screech or sing really loudly or drop the octave because they can't reach the height. Now we wanna, we wanna give people as many ways to sing out and to use their voices as possible. And the keys of songs is, a, is an important way of doing that. The next thing is about song choice. You know, sometimes because of the way things land, we can either be a bit serious with our worship leading or we can be too joyful and just go the other way and not engage at all either. Actually, what we want to do is think about songs that lead people to God. In this season and actually at all times, you know, we walk into a place or we, or we sit down on the sofa, whatever it might be, and we, our starting position sometimes isn't in that place of lifting our eyes to God. And so our job as worship leaders is to say, let me remind you who you're coming today. Let me remind you who's for you today. Let me remind you who you are in God today, who you are in Christ today. Our job is to lead people upwards. So with your song choices, I want to encourage you to make sure the content leads people upwards as well as giving people opportunity to respond. And also, there are going to be people watching that maybe have never walked into the building before, have never actually come to church, don't know anything about Jesus. So I always try to put something in about the cross and what the cross has done. Tell, tell people about what Jesus has done for us. It's a great reminder for us as believers, but also if there are people coming in who don't know Jesus yet, we wanna tell them about the cross because the cross changes everything. What Jesus did in his death and resurrection changes everything. So I wanna encourage you to consider that as well in your song choice. And then I wanna to talk to you about flow. So you might be in a church environment where you've been used to just doing one song after another and uh, there's a break in between or maybe just do back to back. But maybe you're a part of a church where there's often been space and you've had room for the prophetic and room to sing out. Well, I wanna encourage you, there's still a possibility and opportunity to do that. We just have to be um, really helpful as we do that. So I wanna encourage you, and I would probably say to do this live as well, is when you reach those moments where you think, this is the moment for space, this is the moment where we can sing out, this is the moment where we can consider or we can wait. Just make sure that your congregation on the other side of the screen gets some sort of instruction. It might be that you say, why don't we just uh, wait for a minute and give them opportunity to move their body posture to listening? Or why don't we just lift up our voices and sing something together? Sing out your song of thanks, sing out your song of praise. Or why don't you just pick up your Bible and find a scripture that is resonating with you right now? 
Why don't you sing out a prayer? Maybe God's speaking to you right now. Why don't you lift your voice and just sing that prayer out? Singing, giving people opportunity and tools to be able to do that is really helpful. And for you to be able to arm yourself with choruses and scripture and maybe an encouragement so you've got it in your back pocket, that actually helps as well. And thinking about then where you're transitioning to. So don't think about up to the point of where you have space and then let's see. Always plan the next bit. And then if, you, if it goes somewhere else, great. But if, you, if it doesn't, actually you know where you're going and you can lead people through and keep people comfortable within that. It's wonderful to release people in song, but sometimes people need to know how to do that. I just wanna encourage you finally to be authentic in your worship. You know, I've talked about smiling and mic position and body posture and making sure you're looking in the camera and we can be a little bit like this, trying to get it all right. But actually, of course, we want to be worshippers ourselves. We want to be people who lead um, through, through being worshippers ourselves. It's really important to be authentic in your worship, to be real, to actually be worshipping and, uh, and then take people with you. And within that authenticity, it's fine to say, you know, we've had this kind of a week or that kind of week, to be real. But within that, again, remembering that your job is to encourage people to look to God. So make sure in your authenticity, you are encouraging and you bring joy into people's homes. You bring life and light into people's homes as you lead them to Christ, as you lead them to a faithful, loving God. So those are just a few top tips that uh, I've discovered are really helpful within the context of leading worship online. And I wanna encourage you to keep believing that God has called you to this place, to keep believing that you are communicating. You know, I've had incredible stories through these Wednesdays and through these coffee mornings of God uh, not being restricted by walls, not being restricted by not being together. You know, God is on the move. God wants to be with his people and we get the amazing opportunity to lead them. So I just pray God's blessing on you as you do this. Thanks.